The super kind concept is super confusing and I just don't get it. I'm saying I Hey everyone, it's Bree Seasony and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing the one sentence K-pop opinions trend. Really quickly, I just want to thank my newest channel member, Vermillion. Hi Vermillion, I appreciate your support and I hope that you continue to enjoy my content. So for those of you that aren't aware, you can now join my channel and become a member. It's a great way to show your support of the channel if you enjoy my content and get some pretty cool membership perks in return, like shout outs in every video, priority comment replies, members only icons and emotes, members only discord server role, and more. So if you're interested, you can click join below this video or on my channel page, but if not, I appreciate you just watching my videos because that supports me too. Now back to the video. If you aren't familiar with this trend, I'll be giving you my one sentence K-pop opinions. They will be completely unfiltered and honest without any explanation. I have about 60 one sentence K-pop opinions here and I can't wait to share them with you guys. So obviously these are my opinions. You can agree or disagree, that's up to you, but make sure to let me know in the comments whether you agree, disagree, or if you have any of your own one sentence K-pop opinions that you wanna share. And quick disclaimer, if you are one of those people that that cannot handle K-pop opinions videos or if you get upset when someone disagrees with you, please don't watch this video. But if you're mature and you can handle it, keep watching. I also want to recommend that you check out my Discord server if you haven't already. It's a fun safe space where you can talk to other K-pop fans and just engage with my community. So I will leave a link to my server in the pinned comment. Without further ado, let's get right into the one sentence K-pop opinions. Ageism in K-pop is one of the most toxic traits of idol culture. Idols like Taemin and Boa are the standards for the ace or all-rounder idol archetype. The boy's rap line is ridiculously slept on. The upcoming SNSD comeback will cause a lot of newer K-pop fans to take a look at second gen music. AT's Choi San is one of the most entertaining idols to watch perform. I don't stand 17, but I think they're one of the most hilarious K-pop groups out there. NCT's Infinite concept is interesting and unique. Some people just like to complain. Most K-pop stands hold idols to moral standards that they don't hold themselves to. And Hypen Nikki is so talented that it's actually scary to think where he'll be in a few years years. The rivalry between toxic girl group stands and boy group stands is childish and needs to go. Most K-pop fans prefer groups over soloists because they enjoy the chemistry and dynamics between members of groups on and off stage. I really hope that Blackpink's comeback will be worth the wait. BTS's choice to go on hiatus at the height of their careers could normalize going on breaks in the K-pop industry. The super kind concept is super confusing and I just don't get it. Elast is extremely underrated with a great discography and a unique concept to match. Idols like Exo Chen, Hyuna and Dawn, Red Velvet Joy and Crush, and most recently Got7 JB are making Delulu's realize that idols do date and it should be normalized. The NCT Lucas scandal is one of the strangest idol controversies I have ever seen. Sasangs are the blight of idol culture and sadly, they aren't going anywhere. I really don't think idol Sujin will return to music. Twice has some of the most aesthetically pleasing music videos ever. Stage presence can make or break a K-pop group's success. WJSN's last sequence is one of the most beautiful K-pop music videos I've ever seen and not enough people are talking about it. Whether they admit it or not, many K-pop idols debut with the end goal of becoming an actor. People who still drag Woojin's name through the mud are clueless, morally bankrupt, or both. Momoland member Daisy recently spoke out and said that MLD fired her without explanation and I believe that this happens way more often than we can imagine. Some fans' behavior on fan calls is downright creepy. Only One Of has one of the best fourth gen boy group discographies. People really want to keep in hyping in a box and it's getting old. I'm not a fan of Hybe's stylistic auto-tune or vocal processing trend either, but I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. Espa gets a lot of hate and criticism, but the numbers speak for themselves. Fix are the original concept kings. SM still perceives former TVXQ member Jae Jung as their visual standard for male idols and visuals we see today. The Feel My Rhythm era 
era had some of the most creative and beautiful styling in K-pop. Going off of Feel My Rhythm, I desperately need more classical music samples in K-pop. Elast Creature is one of the best title tracks to be released this year. Some K-pop stands use out of context situations to justify their outrage and put negative labels like misogynistic, racist, etc. on idols. Once an idol messes up, whether they apologize or not, fans will always watch them closely under a microscope. Nmix 00 was one of the worst debuts ever and it's a shame because the girls are really talented. SM failed Super M and now we have GOT which brought us an amazing single but to be honest seems like an unplanned mess too. Buying K-pop tickets is downright traumatic. K-pop survival shows are like a train wreck that you just can't look away from. Most people who comment on idols weight aren't genuinely concerned concerned about their well-being. Some fans take pleasure in being overly critical and negative towards rookie group's comebacks. K-pop leaders, especially those in large groups or that self-produce and write, don't get enough credit. Sunmi is an idol who never misses when it comes to retro concepts. The boys' Bermuda Triangle of visuals is really something else. Aegyo will never fail to make me cringe. EXO's discography is iconic and timeless. I love J-Hope's more, but HYBE really dropped the ball by not selling physical versions of Jack in the Box. I think there's more to the story on why Jesse decided to leave P Nation. One of the reasons why the Kim Garam situation was so shocking to fans is because she is so young. The way some Western media personalities interact with K-pop idols is straight up cringy. Sometimes I wish K-pop companies would get creative with group names again instead of using acronyms or combining a bunch of numbers and letters. I don't stand Stray Kids, but I think Felix is one of the most likable idols. When the best female vocalists are discussed, I never see AOA Choa mentioned, and that is my villain origin story. Victon Han Sung Woo has one of the prettiest and most unique voices in the industry, plus his solo music slaps. K-pop fans you meet at concerts and K-pop fans you interact with on Twitter and TikTok are like polar opposites. TXT's mini so 2 Thursday's Child is album of the year material and their best release yet. I don't know about you, but I cannot wait for SM's new boy group. Yes, KTube is overwhelmingly negative, but it's also very telling how negative videos seem to typically get the most views. All right, so that wraps it up for my one sentence K-pop opinions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, I wanna know what you think in the comments. Did you agree or disagree with any of my specific one sentence K-pop opinions? And do you have any one sentence K-pop opinions of your own? If you do, make sure to share them in the comments below. Also, in the comments, let me know if you'd like a part two because I have a lot of these that I could get out in another video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss any of my uploads. And I'll see you in the next video.